Um, okay, for does everyone know who I am? Yeah. No? Yeah. A bit awkward. You said a bit, a bit awkward. Read the brochure. Yeah, I read the brochure. <laughs> so I've been fortunate enough to travel a bit of the world and enjoy myself at the same time, umpiring. And I've um, been lucky enough to umpire a couple of gold medal games and three Olympics, three World Cups, seven Champions Trophies, one Commonwealth Games, and I finished 162 international matches, 15 different countries. So, so I've seen a bit of the world, played a few really nice golf courses, which was pretty good. <laughs> but um, it's amazing uh, you, how you realise how good Australia is when you go to places like India and Bangladesh and so you really appreciate where we live when you visit places like that. It's a, actually an eye opener, it's really, really good. So tonight we're actually putting together um, a, a briefing with this New South Wales hockey. So these are the guinea pigs with this tonight because no one else in New South Wales has seen it yet. So <coughs> um, we're going to go through it, see what, see what you reckon. Because if there is things that you, you think, you know, are a bit, or need changing or tweaking, by all means, say something. But um, this is what we're trying to put out, and it's for all levels. Because really with the FIH one, it's mainly for the elite. So this is trying to be a little bit more user friendly, <coughs> excuse me, for, for everyone. So there's a fair, if it, there is a fair bit of reading. I can read through the whole lot if you prefer, or you can have turns at reading if you like. <laughs> you're, you're presuming that people are literate. <laughs> um, not at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Oh, we got brain too? Um, maybe, maybe, might need braille. <laughs> but um, this clears it up a little bit. I can still read it, but there's... So, <clears throat> roles and positioning. The role of the umpire is to control the match, apply the rules of hockey, uphold the duty of care to the players and keep the game safe, be the judges of fair play and keep the flow. Each, umpi <coughs> excuse me. Each umpire has the primary responsibility for decisions in one half of the field and is the only one allowed to award a penalty corner or penalty stroke. I see this regularly in local hockey where an umpire at the other end will award penalty corners at the other person's end, which is not allowed. But we still, we still see it. So this, that's why it was, and we've had this issue for a few years in, at different levels, so we're just trying to sort of clear that up a bit. Um, <clears throat> or a goal in the half of the field. However, they may consult with their colleague before making these decisions. And I think this is the biggest problem we have. Because we have people that play an umpire, there's no talking between the games before they umpire. So one comes off, gets changed, the other one comes off, gets changed, they run in the field. There's no team talk, how they're preparing themselves, how they're going to handle different, different situations. And this is, this is part of it. They must also ensure that the correct amount of time is allowed for, for the match and record the scoring of goals and issuing of penalty cards to players. User most probably have tech benches like us most of the games. Sorry? Just for first grade. Just for first grade, okay. Well, we, down home now, we have them for all grades. We've, we've, we've brought that in, especially with the two minute green now. Because we play the two minute green, you, you need the tech people. It's too hard for the umpire to look after that because it's when the person sits on the seat, is the two minute starts and for the umpire on the field to really get that right and it's critical sometimes especially when you get to the, the higher levels of, it's critical that's why they run as fast as they can to get their bottom on the seat so their two minute starts very difficult for the on-field umpires to look after that especially when the game's allowed to flow again so you know that's why we, we're trying to push towards TOs we, clubs have got to do it and Excuse me, if they don't do it, well, we've got a fine system in place, so. Um, okay, and decisions are signalled using a whistle and the use of various hand signals. And we do have various hand signals, <laughs> don't we? Even though there is a standard set of signals for, for umpiring, 
But it's not just our sport, it's, it's all sports, where you have different, different uh, people giving different signals for different things, where there is a standard. Like, you, you have a look how many variations of people who give penalty corners in your own association. Just a simple thing like that. You know, we have the, the teapot umpire that signals like this, and we have the one that doesn't care that's like this, or the one that's really not interested and just like this for 16. And, but, and presentation is a big thing. And when, I, when, I'm, when I'm coaching umpires and trying to help people through just with putting a bit of polish on their game, the best place to make decisions and practice them is actually at home, on your own, in front of the mirror. Sounds stupid, but that's the best place. But you can see how ridiculous it looks. You close your eyes, make, make a decision and the signal in front of the mirror, and then you have a look, you go, oh, God, that looks terrible. And, and it does. You, you do it. You, you really go, God. And if you do that, it, it actually helps you. And then you realise during the game that, because when you, when you see it yourself at home, you get into that position. You, you know where your hands are, <coughs> excuse me, especially at corners, and you see a lot of people for a free hit, you know, they're giving long corners, it's, it's not down the field, people get in all funny positions, and it's all just, just, it's a little polish, but it's presentation, and it's your presence. You look sharp, look smart, and people see you straight away, and they go, whoa, this person switched on. They might know the rules, but they look good. <laughs> but it's, it's true. Presentation is a big thing, and respect is the other. <clears throat> positioning. Exact positioning will be determined by the need to keep the ball in view, the desire to be reasonably close to the ball and the relative pace of the game. So one, one thing I really, really push is the key to umpiring is being in the best position to make the best decision. And that's a simple thing, but being in the best position to make the best decision. The one that really, really gets under my goat is people that umpire on the sideline inside the 23. If you, can't, if you can't be bothered moving, and this is what I say to people all the time, if you're not going to be that mobile, go and get a chair and sit in the circle. The most important area for an umpire is the circle. That's where goals are scored, disallowed. So why stand out on the sideline where you can't see properly? You may as well go and stand in the circle. If you can't move, go and stand in the circle and don't move. That's your key area. That's where you need to get it right. But people keep going, stand on the sideline, stand on the sideline. And you're looking through that many people and legs, it's not possible to see it. Like the way the, the game is this day and age, how fast the ball travels, you know, the sticks. We're, you know, we're not hiding to nothing as it is, really. It happens pretty quick. So the preferred position of most umpires behind it's behind and to the right of the play as the lead umpire, whilst the other umpire, the trailing umpire, is around 15 metres behind at a 45 degree angle with the engaged umpire. Do you understand what I mean there? Where we sort of need to be, if that person's moving up, you need to move with them. I know it's not always easy because we have different levels of, of fitness, different age of, of people, but that's where we've got to be smart and we've got to be in the best position to make the best decision. Sometimes you can't be like, when I umpire at my peak, I used to be inside the 23. If I was a trailing umpire, I'd be in the 23. I used to stand behind long corners in the other end. Because that's where you need to be for your co-umpire. But we can't all be there. So you need to be in the best position for the best decision. And if it means that you don't come past the 23, because you might be injured or, or whatever, you don't come past it. The thing is, between you, if you get it wrong on the halfway line, are you going to cost the team the game? Right? They, they might be whinging, they might have a complaint, but you're not going to cost them the game. But if you're standing on the 23 and they're in the circle and you can't get it right because you, you can't see because you're too far away, then they've got every right to challenge your decision making even though we don't like it. But when we think about it, am I in the best position to make the best decision? No, I'm not. So that's why we've got to be, you know, within ourselves, be in the best position to make the best decision. And that's one thing I really push. If you can't get backwards and forwards, don't. 
but you've got to be able to make the best decision from where you are. But when it's in that key area, you need to be there. Okay, positioning in the shooting circle is critical as correct decisions are necessary here to maintain the control of the match as well as the outcome. And, and that's just what I've been talking about, it's the, it's the whole thing. Preparation, properly addressed, wear our shirts supplied, whistle, pen, cards, have a good understanding of the rules, be confident, pre-match discussion with the other, other umpire to ensure you both are engaged and prepared to work together. And it is, it is a key thing that we're both on the same page when we go out there because you need to work out the, the danger, where we're, where we're handling the situation, who's getting what in what area. Same as the aerial ball, who's looking after it? Is the person on the side going to look after what area? Or is the person down the line going to look after it? And we need to, to work that out before we go out. But because we play umpire, it's not always that easy. We don't get time, a lot of the time, to have that discussion. And that's why sometimes we see inconsistency in decision making. And I think everyone would agree with that. It's, it's not that easy because we, we have player umpires and we have umpire players. Anyone know the difference? You should know Sterling. <laughs> no? Player umpire is a person that just turns up to see they get paid or it's a club appointment. And really, you watch them, they're just there because they have to be. I could go out and pick a player umpire compared to an umpire player. And that's, that's the difference. But sometimes we have people that are good at both. But that's, that's life. You, we can't do anything about that. Because if we don't have them people, we don't have a game. And that's, that's just the way it is. <coughs> so be yourself at all times. Help the players. The players need to understand what you want. And this is, this is a big thing, because one of the big things with umpiring is res respect. And until you earn the respect of players, and obviously I'm talking at a higher level now, until you earn that respect, you aren't hiding to nothing. You've got to have that, that respect, because if it's not there, we're always going to be at loggerheads. We really are. And that's about being approachable, not being arrogant, accepting that if you know we've made mistakes and that's, that's a key to it. Teamwork and cooperation are critical. Let's help and support each other. Be aware of the areas of the turf where your fellow umpire could need assistance. Try to get the decisions correct and consistent between the two of you. Use common sense. Understand the players intentions. And that's one of the things if we don't understand the players intentions it's where we can come a little bit unstuck. Because the thing is, what is their intention? And, and the, the big thing that will come up here after is ARA, awareness, recognition, action. So we need to be aware of what's happening, recognise what they're trying to do, and then act on it. And I always say, high risk, high penalty. If you're not in position to make a tackle, you're not in position to do that, and you choose to do that, that's high risk. So if, you're not, if a player's not in position to make that tackle and they get it wrong, it's a high risk. High risk, high penalty. But the minor ones, I'm, I'm happy with that. But we've got to be aware of what actually they're, they're trying to do. Sometimes it's just it's lack of skill. They get tired. Sometimes is because the defence is low on numbers and they'll deliberately shut down. Even though it might look accidental, they know exactly what they're trying to do. And they will succeed because they practice it at training. A lot of teams do. <coughs> <coughs>